Hello, I'm Gintara and in this video I'll show you how to start learning code and share the best learning resources. Let's dive in! Whether you're looking to improve your coding skills or start a career in technology, learning to code can bring many benefits. It will help you land a high-paying job and develop new skills. And the best part, you don't need a degree or thousands of dollars to learn how to code. You can become an expert by joining boot camps and online courses and practicing it from the comfort of your home. The tech industry is on the rise and this trend won't stop anytime soon. According to Glassdoor, an entry-level software developer can earn around $106,000 per year in the United States. But many developers work as project-based freelancers, so coding can also be your new side gig. If you want to learn code as a hobby, adding a coding certification to your resume can also be a plus point. It helps to showcase your interests and constant development. Not only that, but coding can also boost your problem-solving and logic skills. Since people code programs to make things easier, it allows you to think strategically and create impactful projects. Set your goals. Before you start taking courses, you need to set your goals. The tech industry is constantly changing. What makes code learning a long-term journey? By knowing what you want to achieve, you can track your progress and choose the languages you learn. Stating clear goals will make your learning journey easier, as it will help you manage your time and effort. For example, if you aim to switch careers, you might need to spend more time learning how to code than people who are just doing it as a hobby. Learn programming languages. I know that you're already excited to learn popular programming languages like JavaScript, Python or Ruby, but it would be better to learn procedural languages like C and Pascal first to get used to fundamental concepts and how to implement them. Procedural languages specify all the steps that a program or device must take to reach a desired state or output. To demonstrate, let's say you want to play music through a music player app on your computer. A programmer's duty is to create instructions to allow the computer to play the music through the speakers once a user clicks on the play button. Since you can use these languages for most general uses of programming, you'll be able to create simple and quick projects to get started. Once you have mastered procedural languages, you can proceed to learning more programming languages depending on what type of project you want to create. Get to know the tools. At the beginning of your learning process, you can write code using Notepad++ or Atom, two of the most popular text editors. Once you get used to the code writing process, you can use an integrated development environment, IDA, like Visual Studio or NetBeans. After you've gained enough expertise, the next step is to write code using a framework. It makes the development process much easier by providing libraries of pre-made code and components to avoid repetitive coding. Choose a specialization. You can learn how to code to create desktop applications, websites, online games, mobile applications, and the list goes on. But it is almost impossible to master all of the existing programming languages. There are too many of them, not to mention keeping up with trends and updates. Being able to code using several languages is excellent, but I recommend specializing on the languages that match your goals. If you want to become a web developer, you can start with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Then, do you want to be a front-end, back-end or full-stack engineer? To be a front-end developer, for example, you also need to learn about graphic design and user behavior. Learning frameworks and libraries like React and jQuery is also a bonus. But if you want to be a data scientist, Python would be the best language to focus on. Learn about the SDLC. If you aim to kickstart a career as a programmer, keep in mind that you have to write code according to what was requested, not on your own preference. Often, you'll also work in a team even if you're a freelancer. Because of that, it's essential for a new developer 
to know the Software Development Lifecycle or CDLC. The CDLC provides a flow to help the creation of high-quality, well-tested and ready-to-use software. It consists of six phases – requirement analysis, planning, architectural design, software development, testing and deployment. Understanding the software lifecycle will help you and your team determine what it takes to deliver features or code changes to your clients. But the process won't be the same for all projects, teams and clients. Even if you're developing similar projects, the process should reflect their specific goals. Build projects. You learn different languages, tools and process. Now it's time to build a project. Start by creating simple ones, like a static portfolio website or an application with simple features. Once you can complete simple tasks easily, gradually increase the project's complexity. Here are some tips to help you get started. Start with daily life problems. If you feel like your expenses have been out of control, a simple financial management application can be a great project idea. Choose a project that you're interested in. It's important to do something you're passionate about to keep you motivated. For example, if you love fashion, create an app to help people choose their outfit. Build valuable projects. Reach out to NGOs or even your family and friends and create a project for them. It'll help develop your management skills, plus an impactful project makes your CV stand out. Don't forget to record your work in an online portfolio or GitHub, as it can be useful to build a career as a programmer. GitHub allows you to host Git repositories, manage them, engage with the community and also share your codes with others. The more contributions you create, the bigger the chances you will get a call from headhunters. Also, while building your projects, you might find a problem or get stuck. That's totally normal. Reach out to other programmers via GitHub, LinkedIn or even social media platforms like Twitter or Facebook. Apart from helping you with your project, they may also offer advice, share resources and help you navigate this career path. Now you know what are the steps to learn how to code, but where to learn it? Code Academy is an e-learning platform that offers courses in 14 programming languages including HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Python. In Code Academy, you can also choose a course plan according to your preferred subject area, like web development, data science, computer science, and many more. If you are a complete beginner and have no idea which language to learn, you can take their sorting quiz. You'll answer several questions to find out which career path, language, or course suits your interests. Code Academy also provides a discussion forum where you can ask questions to other learners and build a network. FreeCodeCamp is a non-profit organization that provides free code learning resources. To obtain the certifications, you need to pass the tests and build five projects for each. It's a great platform to gain not only theoretical knowledge, but practical experience as well. If you use Duolingo, you like Edabit. It has similar features, but designed for programming languages. This platform offers a gamified environment where you can gain XP, level up and unlock achievements. There are more than 10,000 interactive coding challenges from beginner to advanced levels that you can access for free. Edabit covers 8 languages – C Sharp, C++, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, Ruby and Swift. Since the website is designed like a game, it's better to have some basic programming languages knowledge and use this platform to practice and test your knowledge. That said, Edabit provides Python and JavaScript tutorials for complete beginners. While Edabit is a great platform for beginners and intermediate coding learners, Coding Game is the perfect platform to level up your skills. This free website is more suitable for intermediate to advanced learners. Unlike other gamification learning websites, 
Coding game doesn't use badges or achievements, but several types of games to help your learning process. With more than 20 programming languages available, this website allows you to code in real time while seeing the game on the screen's corner. If you are learning code with your friends, there is also a multiplayer option where you can compete with them. Another fun part is that, like any other games, you can join an international programming contest and win prizes. But even if you don't participate in the contests, you can just actively play the coding games and get featured in the leaderboard. The good news is, several recruiters check the leaderboards so it can help you get a job. W3Schools is a user-friendly platform that provides materials in text and video. If you are a complete beginner who prefers interactive websites, it's a great choice. Most of the lessons are free, but if you want to continue your code learning journey on this website, their premium features will unlock self-paced courses and certifications. After each course, you get to practice coding using their online code editor. It has a split screen, so you can practice code on the left side and see how it runs on the right side. Even if you already have some knowledge, it's worth checking the platform, as they regularly update the resources and launch new courses. Dash is a project-based learning system, where students create websites for various purposes with increased levels of difficulty. The projects include creating a personal website, a responsive blog theme, a business website, CSS robots, or Mad Libs games. Dash puts you in web and mobile development scenarios, while also providing in-depth courses along the way. It feels like doing a real project for a client, so it can also help you getting used to the life of a professional web developer. The platform is available for free, and it's a good option for those who want to focus on the fundamentals of web development. After watching this video, I hope you feel inspired to take your first step and learn coding. If you decide to pursue it as a career path, keep in mind that it's a profession that requires constant learning and keeping up with trends and updates. If you have any questions about how to learn to code, let me know in the comment section below. And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and hit the subscribe button. Good luck and see you next time!